This episode of the Writer's Room Game Show is brought to you by Plot Devices, creators of the Story Clock Workbook. Go buy one, please. Hey everybody, I'm Seth. And I'm Ryan. And well, psych. <laughs> psych. We got them. They believed us. <laughs> Welcome back to the Writer's Room Game Show. It's the podcast for you know. Uh, every week, we generate an original feature film idea from scratch in under 60 minutes, working from a set of random prompts given to us by a big Hollywood studio. At the beginning of every episode, the studio, which is really just an iPhone shortcut we made that's really cool, and we're not going to give it to you because it requires a lot of third-party components that we don't want to teach you how to set up. So stop asking. Stop asking. But we are making something cool, but we can't tell you about it yet. It is The studio assigns us the contestants, and we are the contestants. It assigns us a new project consisting of four components. And those core components are the genre, the tone, the demographic, and a studio mandate, which is basically just a random thing that the studio is asking of us. Yeah, the last uh, we just did a live episode and I said that a studio mandate could be Shrek as the protagonist. <laughs> Which is now going into our generator because I want to hear what happens when we get served that. So after we get our assignment, we have one hour to develop a feature film idea that fits the assigned criteria. Hey, Ryan, are there su- uh, uh, could we ever expect surprise roadblocks along the way? You know, there might be surprise roadblocks along the way as well. <laughs> What else, Seth? What else is there? Well, you know, at the end of every episode, I feel like we should focus group the idea with one of our talented filmmaker friends and ask them like actual stupid focus group questions, you know, like, would you recommend this movie to a you? Would you recommend this movie to a not you and a pepperoni and roll around if we, if we answer positively, you know what we should do? (laughs) What should we do, Seth? We should win. And that's what we would do. We'd win the podcast. And if they, uh, if they answer no, of course we lose. And that's about it. This intro is recorded on September 24th, 2021. The episode that you're about to listen to is actually one of the first things that we ever recorded. It's a In pra- our life. It's a, <laughs> it's a practice episode. Um, what, right when we came up with the idea and we had everything ready, uh, me and Seth got together and we just kind of practiced it to figure out the rules, figure everything out. You know what we found out? We don't need practice. We're, we got this. We're perfect. The energy was perfect in those, these first two episodes. It was, it was right. Like it clearly the dynamic, actually it really is way better than I remembered it being. Like, it actually, uh, I actually really love this episode. The, the part of the reason we're re- releasing this other than just having, um, content in between seasons is the fact that we really like this movie that we came up with. And even though, uh, you know, some of, I mean, it feels like we're kind of figuring it out, the, the, the flow of the show, which we are. I, we thought it was good enough to release, um, even if the quality of it isn't, you know, tip top. Just on a technical level, the, the story is a lot of fun. Is it that bad? Um, it's not too bad. I mean, it sounds just like the greeter sounded, which I thought sounded pretty good. Oh, it was great. It's I the, didn't know it was the anything Zoom audio. The but we wanted to record a new intro just to talk a, bit, a little bit about that and uh, introduce it. So let's it do that. Guys. I'm Seth. <laughs> and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but god uh, we're funny yeah we really hope that you guys enjoy um one of our practice episodes entitled velcro and bird velcro and bird do you guys do you guys have anything else to say do your guests have anything else to say uh my kids right behind me <laughs> yes no no stuff stuff, stuff. eat bananas yep. eat bananas that's the advice of the day <laughs> please enjoy velcro and bird da, 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 da. <laughs> And now we hear like the applause and the curtain closing and the the orchestra tuning up. (laughs) Hello. I guess that's the studio. I'll I'll answer. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What could they be saying? Okay. I mean, if that's what you want, we'll we'll do it. All right. All right. Thanks. Bye. Whew. That was sh- short and sweet. I guess this will be interesting. They also emailed it, so I have it. Uh, oh. I guess that's Hollywood. 
uh, calling <laughs> and emailing. Um, okay, here we go. So the genre needs to be an indie comedy. Uh, I guess that's in the vein of what would be an indie comedy? Like Juno? Wow. Wait, I don't know what year it is that I just said Juno, but... <laughs> Uh, 2008. Yeah. Uh, the tone needs to be fun. So a fun indie comedy. Okay. I like that. I like Demogra- that. Demographic. Girls age two to six. <laughs> and the mandate. The executive really wants a chase scene on jet skis. Even though we delivered it to them last week in our super unrecorded practice episode. They want executives. They want another. They want. Yeah. They want a chase scene on jet skis. Okay. So fun indie comedy for girls age two to six featuring a jet ski chase. Indie comedy. So we've got uh, late 2000s Sundance hits, which uh, are a little bit leaning towards adults. Yeah. So what are some other comps we've got? I mean, indie comedy, Hunt for the Wilder People is an indie comedy. Um, So, yeah. uh, What's the current indie comedy? Like, I feel like there's not a very... I mean, Palm Springs, that's an indie comedy. Palm Springs is a very good example. Because I was going to say, I don't feel like there's a thriving indie comedy scene right now compared to like... Because A24 all takes itself incredibly seriously. Yes. Yes. Um, I think playing, you know, something like Safety Not Guaranteed from what, however many years ago. That was the last. Indie indie comedy that's sort of playing with some genre elements that we like. Time travel or, you know, this... Sci-fi but grounded kind of stuff. I, yeah. I like that idea. That's now, good for, for two to six year olds. Two to six year olds. So I mean, let's talk about what is usually made for age two to six. That's an interesting age. That's mainly Dora the Explorer. <laughs> um, yes. Um, you have kids. What are? I guess when they were two to six years old, what are they? Uh, what are they watching? I know kids love uh, what Daniel Tiger. Yeah, they do love Daniel Tiger. They love Daniel what, Tiger. What if they we love... have animals? Animals as the main characters in her. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Kids love that. It's got to be an indie comedy though. So like, animated it's fun. and indie animation gets kind of like there's not a lot of that, and that doesn't tend to skew that's toward true. kids. And when it does, the quality tends to not be great because it's expensive. And okay. So if we did animals, it would have to be like a like Benji kind of a thing, like or no, like Homeward Bound almost. So to be like we'd film real animals and then <laughs> dub their voices yes. in, and, you know, not without which the I like, which I like. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. I'd love to bring back the Homeward Bound uh, B- uh, Benji genre of film. Yes, <laughs> yes. In fact, and that that's exactly what we're going to do. Now that I have heard myself say it out loud, I think that's 100 percent what we should do. I think we have to go that direction. Okay, but at the same time, the indie comedy. Maybe we play with the kids, you know, animal family movie, like talking animals, but also put some of the indie comedy tropes in there, which yeah, for, ki- for kids is a little bit more difficult, but I feel like it's playing with that. Um, it's usually like coming of age or, you know, there's some serious real world situations that are going on maybe in the background that kids, we, we cover it up with some fun kid stuff, but for adults... It can still have the, you know, I guess like a Pixar movie. There's still a uh, some heart to it. There's still a, maybe a grounded real life message yeah. to the movie. Well, let's talk about like what what makes an indie comedy an indie comedy. Like you pointed out, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. I, I don't think that I don't I don't know if coming of age. Like it's really easy. I think to come. Many of them are coming of age. You're absolutely right. So I think it's important to have that on our list. But there's also there's also the whole safety not guaranteed Palm Springs dynamic that you brought up earlier, which is like, which is the genre twist, the low budget genre story, the like human based genre story, um, is a big indie comedy thing. But man, totally. like indie comedies before that were Juno, and then before that were Kevin Smith movies, um, like Clerks and you know all the Jay and Silent Bob things. It it kind of runs the gamut too because you also have like. What we do in the shadows, which would, oh yeah, you know, sort of be considered indie comedy. It's a super low budget comedy. Um, so it just needs to be early, under early five Wes Anderson million. movies. We just need to be able to make it for under five. I think that's really what it is. And so something with animals, you can I make like for that. under five million. Um, Gets us out of the making an adult movie for kids. Absolutely. Um, but what so I do just love. Think, well, I just realized we have to do a jet ski chase with animals <laughs> now. That's fun. I I like. Uh, well, maybe. 
Uh, I like that. I mean, there can be some human characters, you know, like Homeward Bound. You still have a family that, you know, your B story is... It's not really a B story. It's mostly about the animals, but yeah. there's there's still those human characters. So who knows? Maybe these animals end up on these jet skis while the humans are racing them. Um, or could the humans be on jet skis chasing an animal that's swimming? Ooh, I like that. I like that. Uh, of course, I don't know what, hum- I th- what, what animal can swim faster than a jet ski? <laughs> when you have a shark character. I don't know. Um, I, suddenly we're in the ocean now. I was imagining this in like a river or lake, like a woods yes, environment. Outside of the suburbs. Um, All right. So there's a river shark. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> um, I feel like the jet ski chase really needs to be integral to the story in this one. I think it does too. In, in, our, in our previous practice episode, we just threw it in and as like a throwaway scene. You're right. So but maybe what's an inside We really need to give the, the studio chase. what they want. Um. Yeah, maybe they uh, maybe they need to get across this. I keep on thinking of Homeward Bound now. I'm like, what's taking these animals on this this journey? Well, but yeah. Maybe, there, maybe there's a, a river or a, a lake that's separating them from one side to the other, and they have to cross it to get to the you know continue their journey. Um, and they just happen to see a, a bunch of humans having a jet ski chase, and they jump on so they can make it across. Okay, so it's it's uh. just a coincidental jet ski chase. It's to happenstance <laughs> jet ski chase. You're, you're a run-of-the-mill, I, I guess. <laughs> everyday, everyman jet ski chase. I guess, yeah, I guess that doesn't really make it integral. And it not, not just happen. humans playing on jet skis, not just like, you know, some dudes relaxing okay, in the woods hey, on a jet hey. ski. They are chasing each other. <laughs> James Bond movies. I feel like there's a every other movie. There's a jet ski chase. What if we we tie in, you know, sort of another genre. We we attach ourselves to a a subgenre like a a spy movie or an action movie, something like that. That but with animals. You know, think of like uh, what was that Will Smith movie that I didn't watch that came out last year with the bird? It was a spy movie, but for kids. There was a Will Smith movie with a bird. Uh, Tom Holland and uh, Will Smith turns into a bird. You know what I'm talking about? What? No. <laughs> it's uh, he's a spy. He's like oh, uh, it's animated. Oh yeah, the yes, spy pigeon yes. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <coughs> oh, I wish it wasn't animated. Now that you've said that. Yeah, I was uh, like, <laughs> I I need to see this movie pronto. <laughs> no, but, you know, a jet ski chase to to make it. You know, what if it? I don't know. I don't. I don't want to get too far into the weird sort of putting too many genres in because indie comedy is is the it's the big goal but yeah because i worry that having like you know opening with a jet ski chase like the, establishing a secret agent and a secret agent's dog and this dog <laughs> gets given a flash <laughs> that, that's drive. bigger budget that's like, not indie yeah it's like that gets way bigger budget even if you, you put all that five million into that totally. opening and then you just film some dogs you know with a <laughs> with an fs7 for like you know three months yes. yeah, yeah, um yeah. uh Although a flash drive, be, that's oh, that's so '90s, like Beethoven type plots, where like you put yes. like a flash There's... drive is on, on around one of the dog's collars, and like yes, and so they're like, it's like Home Alone three, like they're all like yes. they're now after these dogs because they have R- Russian operatives yeah. that are after a toy car. Uh, Although I mean, I'm not I, against I'm not, Russian not operatives against uh, <laughs> yeah, looking no. for a dog in the woods. Not entirely I kinda, against I kinda it. I kind of love it though, man. I kind of love it. Um, okay. Well, let's, we can talk about, I'm trying to think of a way to, to break this story other than just talking about the jet ski chase. We should probably <laughs> talk about our, our, uh, our characters or like a theme we want to play up or uh, maybe just talk about the animals we want to choose first. Absolutely. Um, so dog is like, classic i feel like we gotta have a dog in so this. what kind of dog does it need to be i because i you know first thing you think of is like a german shepherd or a, a golden uh golden retriever, retriever. Yeah. but that's been done before in fact that dog commercial that i directed several years ago we originally wanted a i think it's a boston terrier they're like the white and black like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we were going to name the character, this dog character, Taco. And it was like the cutest idea. I loved it. And I thought that was going to be, and that that wasn't my idea for the Boston Terrier. That was Sandwich's idea. Um, but uh, client wanted a golden retriever. And we ended up working with like the most adorable and incredibly trained golden retriever ever named Gold, uh, Augie. And it was wonderful. But I still always wish we had gotten the Boston Terrier and done that version. I think I'm thinking of the right dog, a Boston Terrier. 
Yeah, Boston Terrier. They're kind of cute. They flat face, not flat face, but it's you know, oh it's yeah, a, yeah. They're freaking adorable. But the Boston Terrier does have a certain amount of character to it that makes it a supporting character. Like, yeah, if you look at a Boston Terrier, it's like that's the <laughs> Joe Pesci voiced dog. Yes, yes. Which is, I think, and that's uh, we have to put that in now. Well, but uh, it, what? But the problem is, we're okay. So we just casted the Chance character. So then. We got to be careful that we're not casting Shadow, Chance, and Sassy here, um, Man. because that because the Boston Terrier immediately feels like a Chance type character. Was that Michael J. Fox originally? Man, I don't remember. Now I'm gonna just look up Homeward Bound. <laughs> All right, I thought of a Boston Terrier. You uh, think of the next the next. Well, dog. I was gonna say uh, we have a dog that's an incredibly rare breed called a Bedlington Terrier, and it's a really oh, it's weird. a really adorable dog. It's adorable, but they're also very weird looking and sort of have a mohawk. I, I see that more as a, a supporting character as well. And maybe it's because in movies we always see the protagonist dog being a like classic American dog, like a lab or a... Let's not a do that. German I don't Shepherd. want a classic American dog. But I, want, I don't want to do that. I want an underdog. Um, there's Nailed the it. title. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, By the way, who do you think played Shadow in your memory? I don't even know Jonathan Taylor Thomas. He was too young at that point. Don Amici played Shadow. Interesting. And Michael J. Fox played Chance and Sally Field played That's Sassy. That's what I was thinking, Chance. Chance I was, was thinking of Chance. Shadow has a very deep voice. Yeah, I remember Christopher it's, Lloyd in my memory being Shadow, but it was Don Amici. Uh, and Sally Field played uh, Sassy, which I remember that. Oh, man. Two to six-year-olds, of course. Um <laughs> Okay, so so far we know we have Joe Pesci playing a <laughs> supporting. <laughs> I don't think we know. Let's not commit Boston. to Joe Pesci. We have uh, a jet ski chase. Um, okay, uh, uh, let's see. Dog, maybe we should mix it up, like Homer Brown. I mean, there. I know there's a cat. If it didn't have to be That's shootable, smart. I would say a bird. I would say a dog and a bird, but it's got to be shootable, and the bird is out in that case. Are, are raccoons trained? Do raccoons get trained in real life for film? That's an excellent question, and I'm going to look because it up right I, now. I think that could be really fun to have little trash panda hanging out with them. Um, trained uh, raccoons for film on Google. <laughs> a raccoon can't be trained like a cat or a dog, and it will never become truly docile. Okay. Uh, you, yeah, and you, you, you know, we're we've got to do things with the animal's consent. We're not going to tie tie the raccoon's hands together and and make him do uh, action like I've seen <laughs> in 90s movies before. Nope, not doing that. Uh, we're not going to, we don't want the filmmakers to run into controversy here with our, with our movie we're developing. Exactly. Um, indie comedy, fun, two to six year olds. I think we're got, we're doing good talking animals, like, but ho- like voiceover talking animals, a- Homer Bound type talking animals. Is great. Yes, yes. Benji, Benji didn't talk, right? Benji was just a, Benji, I, I remember so. correctly, was a very moody piece about a dog wandering through the woods. It was not a uh, comedy for two to six year olds. No, so we got to have voices but, here. But pe- Babe, Pig in the City, and uh, the the Superior Babe was a movie for kids. Yes, one hundred percent. Hang on, animals um, that can be trained for screen. Pig, pig uh, we can't do a pig. That's uh, pig. It's been it's been done. I feel like it's a little bit more specific. Um, I, I'm thinking suburban. Uh, I feel like it uh, running away from home kind of thing. Uh, on an, on your adventure, definitely. Um, um, running away from home or lost on vacation or like uh, yes. Uh, hmm. We don't want to start sad by having these dogs like abandoned or these animals abandoned. I, f- I feel like we got to start with like a big set piece set piece quote unquote i agree Um, something really fun to get the kids interested and curious before we uh start teaching them lessons (laughs) well i mean they're going to be interested in the talking dogs you know like um i'm looking up animals that are trained i'm looking up uh interesting dog breeds okay uh this podcast will now take a break while we research our (laughs) Uh, these are uh, Hollywood animals, trained exotic and domestic animals. Here we go. 
Big cats, bears, wolves, primates, dogs, cats, hoofstock, barnyard, birds. Birds. So they are trained. Uh, Everything from specialized action to flying to just decorating the background. Pigeons, dove, swan, flamingos, penguins. Penguins. Ostrich, birds of prey, falcon, owls. Oh, my God. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And the dog is named Winter Soldier. (laughs) That's Hey, this becomes a Disney uh, production suddenly. Uh, We just remake uh, a Marvel movie, but with 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 animals. For kids. uh, With animals. We re and we remake no that we're remaking the most violent Marvel installment so far. Um, uh, John uh, John Walker, which is a uh, the whitest. Yes, it's the dog. golden retriever. Yes, <laughs> it's the golden retriever that then murders with, a freaking crow PTSD. or something. Uh, yeah. Um, bird. I mean, I like a bird. I like a bird. With oh, spoiler group. alert! By the way, for everyone who hasn't watched Falcon and the Winter Oops. Soldier. Um, see. Eagles, hawks, vultures, peacocks, parrots, macaw, ravens, crows, and more. I like the idea of like a. What if our protagonist dog is on? You know, gets lost. He's on this adventure, and he's meeting a lot more exotic animals that are. Um, you know, it's sort of a motley crew. You know, it's a little bit more interesting than a. You know, just these you know house trained animals together. I think that's pretty interesting. You could also do like a Toy Story type scenario where like the the kids got or bought an exotic bird and the dog do, the dog is jealous of the attention the exotic bird is getting. That's true. That's and then true. You, and then you put them out in the wild together where they have to get back home. We we sort of go buddy film with it a little bit. Yeah. And and then we get it to the place where the the dog is protecting the exotic bird in the woods, like, and they're using their powers together. Yes. Protecting it from the like hawks or, you know, vultures or whatever. Vultures are good villains. I like that. Oh yeah. Uh, hawks are I don't too, know how trained, Haw- trained they are. Vultures come after you if you're dead, dude. Hawks, they'll yeah. come after you. They don't care. Actually, so, yeah, they think and, they prefer you to and, be alive. And it's, so if we do do dog and bird, which I like, I like, dog I feel and like bird. The, the dog might need to be a little bit bigger than like a Boston Terrier to make, to have some differences in the size. Yeah, and, definitely. You know. And we call the movie bird dog, right? Bird <laughs> <kidding>. dog. <laughs> dog bird. Bird dogging. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah. So if we, you, you pick the bird, I'm going to pick the dog breed. Uh, well, I found this bird. What I don't know what kind of bird this is, but uh, let me put it in the chat here. Oh man, all these big dogs have all been in movies. Um, oh, Great Dane, that's fun. That was in Homeward Bound, right? Big Great Dane, maybe not. Uh, so many no. dog movies that I'm thinking of. I'm not sure where the Great Dane was in. I like a Great Dane with like a big, like a Sam Elliott voice, but that oh, might yeah. be a little too on the nose. It's a little shadowy. That's true. That's true. I uh, also like a, this thing, whatever this sun, thing is. Sun Con, con can you? Sun Conquer? Yeah, I don't know if that's, con- can you? Is that the name Ooh. of the, oh, a cockatoo. Here I comes. I like that. Uh, uh, you know, listeners, uh, colorful parrot looking bird, bright, bright colors. This cockatoo is great. It has this like, this like fruit, like flippy yes. hair back there. Yes, flippy hair. You know, this is like a really cool character. Yeah, like I mean, the Buzz Lightyear. It's like they're kind of too cool for school, kind of thing. Yeah, they they only think about their you know, their best qualities. Maybe uh, play them up a little bit. I like that. Well, so okay, are they uh, do does the bird get bought on vacation? The dog goes on vacation with the. With the family, does the family buy the bird okay. on vacation? This this bird, maybe it's a uh, tropical climate. Yeah, you know this this bird seems like it'd be more in a tropical climate. Maybe they go on a, um, you know, a family, uh, you know, trip to. And they're like, trying to get home from a tropical climate, or is it on the way? No, <laughs> it's on the road trip no. home. It's on the road trip home that they get lost. Okay, yes, maybe they go to Florida or you know something like that yeah. to the beach. Yeah. Um, and there's, you know, this, uh, you know, a bunch of birds flying around. You can, you know, buy the birds, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it's very classic kid movie where it's like kind of unrealistic why all, why there'd be someone selling these tropical birds on the beach, but it makes sense in a kid movie. 
yeah, I, I like the idea of them um, maybe either getting lost on the way home or the family's about to leave to head head back home. And that's when the animals get lost and the family is, you know, in search of the uh, animals in this new place. Maybe, hey, maybe there's a bonding moment for the family as well, you know, in their search for the, in, as a B story, sort of like in search of the animals. Um, as well, it's like, yeah, it's like a brother sister story. Like, oh, it can mirror the, uh, the animals a little bit. Maybe. Absolutely. Like a uh, big brother, yeah. little sister thing. My kids right now are right at the ages where they, like the youngest just annoys the crap out of the older ones and not on purpose, but like just everything about her annoys them and they're so unreasonable toward her. Um, yeah. You know, Lego movie two did this really well too. It did this whole dynamic That's true. brother and That's sister. True. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean we shouldn't do it, man. I'm looking at the sun parakeet and it really, I, I looked up sun county and like, they're also called the sun parakeet. The problem is they're, uh, native to northeastern South America, but I love how vibrant the colors are on this thing. Does it make sense? I mean, the family could still go to. It's a it's a movie for two to six year olds uh, with talking animals. Uh, maybe they vacation there. Who knows? Well, that's uh, our budget just went up. <laughs> that's true. So it's like, why, <laughs> why would the family buy a bird on vacation? See, when we're having conversations like this, I'm hearing our discussion coming out of the mouths of Jason Manzukas and Paul Shear <laughs> on how did this get made. Like, so they happen to just go on vacation. I can't, uh, I can't, I can't just think. Uh, it's easy for me to say, "Oh, it's a kids movie. Just make it happen." But no, no we actually we're I, presenting this. I we're refuse. presenting this to a studio, so we need to take it very seriously. Well, but you're also talking to me, and I'm very, very <laughs> passionate about this. No, we yes, never yes. should say it's just a kids yes. movie. Who cares? I agree. That's I agree. how movies that we, you're about to have a kid. You're gonna freaking. You're gonna find there's <laughs> so much stuff that yes. you have to sit and watch, and you're like, I really wish the people working on this had just tried a little harder. Totally. I want I want it to be entertaining for adults as well. I gotta I gotta think about that Absolutely. and make sense. Lord make Miller, sense. man, Lord Miller. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, maybe okay. Maybe it's not a sun parakeet. Where is the cockatoo from? But there, I mean, there's pet stores. If they go to a pet store, I mean, these birds will be. There's birds that are originated. Well, that's my thing is I I don't want them to go to a pet store on vacation. It's arbitrarily like <laughs> then you just go to a pet store. And then, like, the vacation has nothing. Why, why can they be traveling? How can we have them? Well, we need a little bit of time. The vacation, well, what, if, what, what if, works what about the vacation bo- is it gives them time to get, a, like, to not get along for a little bit. What, before, if they, what if they don't start on vacation, though, and we have them there, you know, our first act is we see the, uh, the kids enjoying their time with the dog. Uh, I don't want to make it too, too, too Toy Story, like, too on the nose Toy Story, but... They're enjoying their time with the dog. They go to a pet store, um, maybe for a birthday or something, by the by the bird. Um, and then, like, literally, like week after, they go on a trip with the animals. I don't know how how much it makes sense to bring a bird in a car to it a, does on a road it. You trip. could you could make uh, drama out of that drama, but like story out of that of like. You know, if we involve the humans a decent amount, then it's like, and you show the parents' side of there's so there's there's, there's always like a, the choice to make is are we telling the story from only the birds' perspective? Are we telling the story? I'm not birds, but the the, the animals' perspective. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. With that, are we also only limiting it to the kids and animals' perspective, and or are we allowing the like to are we allowing either through the animals' perspective or from a like a uh, I was going to say bird's eye view, but nope, uh, through a, which bird's eye view might be the name of the film. <laughs> yeah, um, that's great. <laughs> f- from like, you know, from an overall, like God's eye view, like, are we, do we get to see the conversations the parents have with the kids don't hear? Like, and I think that actually, that's where we get an opportunity to write smart dialogue mm-hmm. and to create mm-hmm. like smart, some smart character things and dynamics and, and story in this that could appeal to the parents who are having to sit and watch it with their kids <coughs> is to actually see like, you know, we can't bring a bird on vacation. We're going to lose the thing. Like, Oh, you know, like, can you at least try to like the mom being like, can we just try to find an Airbnb that allows birds? Like, okay. Yeah. Allows birds. Like, like <laughs> we make a joke out of like this dad yeah. having this yeah. ridiculous challenge to find a th- place that, you know, allows birds. Yeah. 
And I mean, I know it's for two to six year olds, but you, you still, you have those scenes there. The, the kids are so interested in the, the talking animals that, you know, have just having smart story stuff happening with the parents or with the kids. And you if know, it's from the perspective of the dog, like listening or something, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like listening yeah, to totally. the room, I, and we totally get away with it. Um, totally. Yeah. I love that. So yeah, maybe they, maybe they start at home. The, the bird is bought and then. Yeah, you have they they uh, breaking into the second act is when we're we go on vacation. That's them going on their adventure. You know, it's that Buzz and Woody dynamic, but between a dog and a bird. Like yes. this family has yeah. this this family dog they've had for years, and uh, that was they got on the 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 son like the brother the older brother got on his birthday at a certain age and the little and his the little sister is now at that age to get an animal and she's yeah, requested I like that. Uh, and she comes home with a bird, um, an exotic bird, like a cockatoo or a, or a, um, a sun parakeet. Mm-hmm. And now that those, anim- now, now the dog, uh, doesn't like this bird. This bird is getting all the attention and the brother, the older brother doesn't like the bird. And the idea is to reflect the personalities of the kid, of the, 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 the parallel, the, the, the relationship and personalities of the, the kids, the brother and sister, uh, with the dog and the bird. And, um, the kids convince the parents to let the pets come on vacation with them and is on this vacation on this road trip that the animals, uh, get away from the family. I think rest stop or something. They, you know, something goes down and something has to go down because the dog, because like, because the dog is in, in the same way that, you know, Woody accidentally pushes Buzz out the window by trying to push him between the desk and the wall. Like that kind of thing happens. The bird ends up getting loose and getting in danger. And, and, and the dog immediately is like, I'm like, whatever the situation is, they meant to like, I don't know what it'd be like. And maybe they meant to let the bird free, but in the second they let the bird free, the bird is immediately in danger and the dog regrets it and goes to rescue yes. the bird. And totally. And by in doing that, they are both then stranded. Um, and now they have to get home or get to the location. And they have a limited amount of an understanding of where this Airbnb is that the parents are going to. So that's yes, where they I are. Like that. That's they're where gonna they're going to try to make. go journey to the Airbnb. Yeah. Very, very modern uh, story. Yeah. Uh, About a dog I, and a bird I, trying to get to I, an Airbnb I, that allows dogs and birds. I, <laughs> I, I think the dog should be a labradoodle, a very pretty uh, labradoodle named Velcro, but it has Velcro. like a Nick, Off, uh, Nick Offerman voice, like a very low, unexpected uh, voice from such a pretty, you know, big dog. I love that. So it could be Velcro and the bird. Vel- Velcro the and bird. Like <laughs> It's got to be something so bird. dumb because the, yes. like... Yeah, the, the brother would be like, that's the stupidest name. Why did you name it Bird? You've got mail. They sent me an email that actually has another studio mandate in it. And uh, What do we got? Um, so the, uh, the head of the studio, um, apparently his son is obsessed with dinosaurs okay. and would love to see dinosaurs in one shape or another. Uh, be incorporated into the the script to make up for him being a terrible father. That's um, that is so wildly it, specific and, and it, open of this executive. <laughs> so I'm not saying that we we shouldn't just hide the dinosaurs in some sort of uh, uh, toy or um, in in world um, you know media that someone is watching, but they just said it needs to. One in one way or another. Hey, I got it already. Dinosaurs. I got it already, and I actually kind of love it. Is that okay. the the sister's argument for why the bird isn't stupid? Is that is that the bird used to be a dinosaur, yeah, dinosaur. and the, and the brother's yes. like the bird didn't used to be a dinosaur. That's not how evolution works. Dinosaurs evolved into birds. This bird was never a dinosaur. No, but this bird's ancestors were dinosaurs, so it still knows dinosaur Stand stuff. Up. And so it's a dinosaur the whole time bird can be arguing. Like I got dinosaur stuff. Like I know how to do dinosaur stuff. And then we got to have it do actual dinosaur stuff. 
like to save Velcro yes. at some certain point, or when, the big, when they're working the big together. Climax. Yeah. The big climax, dinosaur. Jurassic, we have a Jurassic Park motif. Uh, 100% <laughs> with bird. Music. Yeah. Yes, with bird. Uh, even, even, you know, straight up homage uh, visually in one way or another to a, a classic Jurassic Park moment. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, whatever. Ripples in, in, in water or mud or something. Um, okay, that's, that's great. We've got that mandate um, under control. I would love to talk about now that we have, you know, about 20 more minutes until we have our focus group. Um, we need to talk about this jet ski chase and how we incorporate this jet ski chase. The studio is really wanting this jet ski chase be integral to our, our story. Um, so um, we should probably reevaluate our, uh, our setting for our story. I know we, st- we started with the tropical thing. We've got, I feel like we've kind of moved. We're not tropical. Little- We're now in like the no, woods, yeah. like maybe like yes. Oregon. Like I'm thinking like Northwest. I, yes. Beautiful Pacific Northwest, big trees. Damn good um, coffee. Damn fine coffee. <laughs> yes, um, yes. And um, I think we should. So, I mean, a, nice, a lake, you know, they, lake. Could, they could stumble upon a lake. There's uh, jet skis in one way or another. Now, the bird on a jet ski, that's kind of fun to me. Um, yeah. Because it almost could be like the bird is faster on a jet ski than it is flying in, you know, I don't know how fast cock- cockatoos fly. But if it's like outrunning a hawk or something by sitting on a jet ski uh I, I by itself <laughs> well no i mean there's some, there's like a human or or someone uh driving uh well, let's see like uh, because it's got it's got to be some sort of uh convenience the the jet ski to the animal where it's like they're they're able to um you know move faster or do something they wouldn't be able to do i mean obviously a dog can swim but it can't go as fast as a Velcro or as a, uh, as a jet ski on water. Well, let's see. Unsure of their top speed paper cited, uh, economical long distance speed at 42 kilometers an hour, 26 miles per hour. That's a cockatoo. That's a sun parakeet or, or, or some kind of bird capable of reaching, uh, 36 miles per hour. Uh, how fast is a jet ski top speed? Got to be faster than that. Jet ski top speed. Oh, f- man. Hover around 45 miles per hour. The fastest ones are capped at 65 miles per hour these days. That's too fast to go on a lake. <laughs> Jeez. So irresponsible. Hey, this is a extreme movie. Um, jet you ski know what? In both it- of our episodes. It's funny if we're telling you in like a Mission Impossible style, like bird trying to hold on to the jet ski or like barely getting fast enough to reach the jet ski kind of a like race. Yeah. And if you pull out wide, that jet ski is not going very fast. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's really funny. Uh, oh, what if the bird is trying to get the attention of the kid? The kids are on the jet skis playing. Yes, and the bird. Yeah, I mean, is- we we have a sequence where they've been they've been searching for their animals for some. Maybe they give up, and it's like the parents are like trying to cheer up the kids. So like, let's just you know have a nice you know, let's go out to the lake and have a, okay. a great day. Ride Both the of jet our skis. films we've now pitched the studio involve adults trying to cheer kids up by taking them <laughs> on jet skis. <laughs> Hey, the studio wants jet skis. We're giving them jet skis, okay? I think the kids should uh, not be having fun, though. Like, I think by that point in the story, they've got to, they're aware they're they're, they're they're moping. They're moping. So, yeah. uh, 100%. The dumb version is they're trying to save a kid who's on a jet ski in the middle of a lake where there's an alligator, but that climate just changed completely. <laughs> yeah, alligator th- throws me off a bit. Yeah. Uh, a shark. A lake shark. I think it. I think it needs to be like a a just like a nice for the family. It's just a nice you know, what a, like they're they're out on jet skis driving around, no danger for them whatsoever. But it's for the animals that uh, that it's there's something dangerous going on. Like, uh, well, but uh, why would I'm saying we can't have the family have fun once those dogs, those animals are lost? Like, so here's what I'm saying. By the time the animals will be closer to the humans again, like but closer to the family again, the family will have already figured out by then that the animals are missing and they'll be looking for them. They will not be able to relax and have fun on a vacation. You know what I mean? Like that's true. The family is going to be just, like, the they wouldn't just give alone. up three, three days. So like, yeah, hey, we need to have fun. We're on vacation. <laughs> yeah. And then they move on to that. 
no conflict <laughs> you're whatsoever. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. So that's what I was saying. Uh, like, you know, if they'd there's... be terrible parents if they're like, we just move on. Let's have some fun. We bought these jet skis. Exactly. Uh, um, uh, and and the and the studio head is wanting to remind people that he's a good dad. So we probably shouldn't have that in his uh, yeah, in his film. <laughs> we shouldn't. Man, what can we do with um, a jet ski? Animals, jet ski chase. It doesn't have to be uh, multiple jet skis. It can just be one. Sure. I mean, if it's if it is some rando on a jet ski, you know, just they're they're by a lake. Maybe there's a sequence. Do uh, they find a human character that like helps them? Like some like like some dumb and, like you know? I'm a thinking good Samaritan. Yeah, and I'm thinking some like teenage kid or like college kid, like like who's like a camp counselor type dude who's like. Who's, oh my gosh no oh my gosh we have it be two kind of stoner guys but we don't we don't no drug use or anything <laughs> but it's like that 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 yes, genre yes, of yes. character yes shaggy from scooby-doo the, like joe velcro comes up and is barking at them and they're like i think that dog needs help and the other one's like you don't understand the like, dog like, like lassie kind of yeah thing. like <laughs> like yeah. one of them immediately interprets like this dog is in trouble someone's in a well and we can pl- do a whole gag playing on that on that whole totally. motif and, and velcro can run away and they'll follow velcro exactly just and like, like yeah uh, and i think that dog wants us to take it <laughs> wants us to put it on the jet ski or wants us to take out those jet skis like i think we should absolutely introduce these characters that just really really believe well, this dog hey, needs their help if- what if they need to make it to like, yeah, like what we the other side of a big lake or something, and they like, and, and Velcro literally leads them to the jet ski. Exactly, on. Velcro the determines like that like the fastest up. way to get there is going to be on this on on one of those. Hey, maybe they they find out that the family like uh, or the Airbnb is in reach or something. This is like near a climax. And maybe this the dinosaur part can come from like. She's been uh, talking about how she came from dinosaurs, from raptors, uh, pterodactyls, all these like really fast flying, you know, uh, and he's like, you have to prove yourself like you're a pterodactyl, like you're a dinosaur, you can do this. And maybe it's like, that's the slow, like flying super fast, like, oh my gosh, she did it. She's really doing it. And then it zooms out. It's going really slow. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to think of like, wow, we Uh, set that up. But like, I... I love the idea that they need to get on the jet ski to they need to convince these dudes to take a dog on a jet ski. Like, <laughs> I mean, if they are stoners, it makes, to me, it makes a little bit more. Yeah. They're, you know, they're just like idiots, you know? Uh, and the kids will laugh because they'll, because yeah, it's, it'll be funny. We got to take a dog on a jet characters. ski. Like, like you can't take a dog on a jet ski and cut to them taking a dog on a jet ski. Like, and the, the image of Velcro holding, bird like behind his paw or something as they're on a jet ski. I don't know how, yeah. how that so, would even work. And but, it ha- So uh, for that to work, there needs to be a ticking clock scenario yes, that yes. is required besides, you know, the Airbnb. Do, are, the, are the animals smart enough to know dates like by this moment that the family might be heading back home, like I, still searching? I was but, thinking about that. And I think that the way you do that is you can do time, not dates, but yeah. you can do, you do this by having routine set at home that Mm -hmm. the that the boy has has been able to teach velcro that like when the little hand gets to the the curly fry or whatever the three whatever that means Mm -hmm. you get to eat something stupid like that like if you have some kind of daily thing that the dog knows time based on just that what happens at a certain time um like dinner like dinner is like, and so basically then the dad can say like, we'll be out of this Airbnb at dinner time. Uh, we're there for two days and we have to leave by dinner time or check out by breakfast time or something. And yeah. the dog knows exactly what time breakfast is. Yes. Um, and that could be like the race. Like that can be the ticking clock is like, it's at a certain meal time. And yes. they can be attributed to Airbnb checkout time. What if? Uh, what if? I mean, it probably sh- the the stoner guy shouldn't be solve everything. But if it's like the Velcro barks, he's like, "What do you need?" And like he paws at his like wrist or something and looks at his wristwatch, and he knows the time. Like if it's but it, like if he's seeing a, a clock, I like that idea um, because that's something that a dog can actually 
probably you could probably train a dog to know what time things are based on that stuff uh and so like if yeah if, or if there's like a diner nearby or something that they were like eating food behind this diner um he looks inside the window and sees a big clock and it's like shh, shh. like you know he sees the clock he sees his face and he like runs and finds these stoner guys so, i don't know i think uh, that when they find the stoner guys they like bark and they're like somebody's trapped in a well and, and, and just imagine nick offerman's voice being yes. like what yes. like no <laughs> um what understand me like just follow me you're you're over you're over interpreting this uh, you, you do the classic you know we we're hearing the dog bark and then it cuts to their perspective and it's just barks yeah um, it, yeah yeah and, and it well and it's just barks and they're like and and they interpret it in the most lassie way and then you know velcro is like no no you're over interpreting this stop like like just follow me this way like and yes. then it'd be funny if they actually then at one point they understood 100 percent what what velcro needed in one random moment they're like wow yes. you nailed that <laughs> yes yes that's perfect uh because they're stoners and of course you know randomly they'll know exactly yeah. what's going on in the story more than anyone else yes even that's like a, it's just like an exposition dump from this stoner basically exactly um um, we'll have to come up so, with any names besides Stoner uh, for yes. a two to six year old uh, story, but dope, dopes. Uh, they'll they'll have names, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, okay, so they jump on the vet these jet skis, and it's not as much a chase as it Badger is. Badger and Skinny Pete will be their names. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Perfect. Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the chase is less like one jet ski chasing another, and it's more two jet skis chasing the clock to yeah the other the other side of the lake uh so they can you know reach the airbnb before dinner time on you know the third day or something uh when jesus rises again <laughs> so, <laughs> dinner time the third day is when jesus came yeah. back to life and moved the stone <laughs> uh, so um and then okay so b story our brother and sister um if our a story is um, we've got Velcro and bird. Um, you know, they've maybe, maybe there's something else in the second act, you know, these fun little set pieces, um, uh, they're arguing, they're bickering. Uh, maybe there's a, a hawk attack or something. Um, they're teaming up together to, you know, face these challenges. They're, you know, starting to get along with each other. Maybe the, the B story with our, our kids, which are brother and sister is what I'll call them. Uh, <laughs> is um i'm trying to think of a way to mirror them but um to still keep it fresh and not be a complete just like they are burden or yeah bird yeah. and velcro um i think uh, uh, something that i really like is sort of using this moment of them both losing their animals and she of course the sister has only owned this bird for what like a week or two i'm thinking and that's um, exactly the boy's argument yeah uh, so he's like, I'm, I'm should be more sad. We've had Velcro this whole time and, and her whole thing is like, well, I love Velcro too. And there's, this, yeah, like, I, I love Velcro this, too. Well, you, know, you don't love my uh, bird. So like, I just lost two animals and you lost yeah. one. Yeah, exactly. And, then, and you can say, well, I love your bird. I don't hate your bird. And be like, well, <laughs> I you, don't hate bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's good, uh, man. I love that. Uh, it's just, and, and I feel like, and this is something that's very universal kids, kids and pets, you know, it's such a uh, huge part of childhood. So I don't think we need to overthink that, that story too no, much, but totally we can, we can uh, make a whole lot of dialogue and scenes out uh, of that. Uh, so that's good. And then, yeah, I mean the, uh, so they make it across the, uh, the lake on the jet skis the, and the, uh, skinny Pete and badger. Hey, I hope you guys find your family. <laughs> Just a no, bird and a dog. They misinterpret away. what the animal's doing, so they need to really think that they like, like. I don't know what it is, but it's like, yes, we did it. Yeah, high five. <laughs> or like, hope you, instead of hope you find your family, it's like, uh, see, because hope you find your family is such a funny sentence. I wish that that wasn't the animal's goal. You know what I mean? Yes. Like. We have to figure out like what, like if something else that they can think the animals are doing and be absolutely sure of and still able to help yes. them in what they're doing. 
Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be something ridiculous. Like they they did this exposition dump before that's like so accurate. And then, you know, almost recalling their entire story thus far. Um, and then by the end, you realize that, oh, they still have no idea what's going no on idea. with these animals. <laughs> but they helped, um, so that's great. Yes. And uh, and then, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking either that jet ski scene could be like the big climax and, you know, they just make a, a quick, you know, uh, oh, we're getting higher now. Uh, Seth, Seth's going up with his with his his uh, standing desk. Sorry. It's beautiful. Oh, it's still going. Okay, it's done. Um, yeah. I'm a tall guy. So, um, yeah, we can go either one of two ways. Where that's the big climax, and then they you know run over a hill, and the family like that's the Airbnb. Or we can have like one final challenge. Um, yeah, I I think them the them just having a nice trip uh, across the lake with uh, Badger and Skinny Pete is a not little too conflict. easy. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's our break into Act 3. Yeah, it's like yeah, that totally. Badger and Skinny Pete get us out of Act 2. Totally. So um, we, we have eight minutes, by the way. Um, so, um, yeah, so, I mean, we could... This could be a moment where we test... Um, the maybe maybe velcro and and bird's relationship is still not like fully you know it's a it's the if, brother if and sister the brother and sister have to work together at the same time as velcro and bird Dude, what what yeah what if they sort of the kids save the no 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 i'm no, no, never mind uh <laughs> i'm is thinking like what if they're reunited before and they have to like do some I don't want to go like too big because I know we're still. Well, ending. are there is there and, uh, an antagonist in the story besides a falcon or and a winter soldier? Um, <laughs> uh, besides, you know, I want so bad for there to be now an animal <laughs> that's a falcon and then some winter soldier animal, whatever that looks like. Oh my gosh. teaming up as villains. Oh um, my gosh, I do too. Um, I mean, there probably should be some sort of animal antagonist like that. So it's not There's just no human nature. antagonist like a, you know, park ranger or a <laughs> animal control or something. I mean, I feel like that's, that, I mean, I guess there could be, but it's, it's cliche and nature as the antagonist. I'm not crazy about either. Uh, but I mean, if there is a hawk or something that, you know, has, you know, maybe every act, Maybe not first act because they're not even on the vacation yet. But every act, if there's a the hawk that shows up and you know is this opposing force, uh, that to me is kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if it to me this character doesn't talk though. It's more of just a uh, a silent killer, so to speak. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like more like real world threat. You know where these are. I don't know. Uh, it's still for kids, so. No, I'm with you there. At the same time, is there? Do we miss out on getting to have another fun character? That's yeah. true. That's true. The Willem Dafoe rat in uh, exactly. In Fantastic Mr. Yeah, uh, that's Fantastic what I'm Fox. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh! I really Anthony, wish, Ma- I really Anthony Mackie have, actually. I really wish we could have Falcon, Falcon and the Winter Soldier as <laughs> yes. bad guys. Hey, why not? But the. Uh, Winter Soldier, I have no idea what animal that would be. <laughs> I know, uh, and an owl? Like hey, a... maybe, maybe it's a... Uh, yeah, it's, it's an owl, and one of their one of their uh, their uh, feet or whatever is like a metal <laughs> like replacement. Uh, oh my gosh, well, yes. Or a wolf, if, a wolf with a metal arm. Well, what if the... Um, oh yeah, because that could be an opposing force for a dog and a bird. Yeah. So if there's, you know, you know an... E- an evil dog and an evil bird why would uh, a wolf have a metal arm though <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say what if what if it is a park ranger or something and he has a hawk that is like a trained hawk um yeah yeah and it's he's he's got a if we can do it without it with uh, <laughs> <laughs> i actually do like that well as long as we're not a making fun of anybody with a disability yes, and yes. two uh no be, he's a badass yeah and two as long as he's not stupid and corny that the character like i'm gonna get those animals like like, like like a beethoven villain exactly it needs to be yeah you know I, I don't, we don't want it to be like john candy and arachnophobia no uh john goodman and arachnophobia 
I've actually never seen arachnophobia. What the living Polly? Watch it this I'm weekend. I'm sorry, man. what am I? <laughs> no, you got to watch it this weekend. It's so good. I've watched it several times as of late. I watched it with Arlie. Like, just she what had never seen it. What would you compare it? it to in terms of movie? Dude, oh my gosh. It is. It's like if Gremlins was good. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. As I'm wearing my gizmo pin. Yep. I'm no. Here, I, I just had to say it. It actually is a lot like. It's a lot like Gremlins, but I like it way better. Um, only because it, it doesn't have the racial stereotypes and the the weird disillusionment of Christmas beloved char- uh, m- mascots and characters for children and and, and it doesn't, yeah it, I mean this the Santa scene could probably leave for yeah kids. I, it has I a few over the top like my big thing with Gremlins is like they're all over the top like characters that were kooky characters that we're supposed to hate so it's fun to watch things happen to them like. I, I hate that, and I hate the music in Gremlins so much. But the arachnophobia, <laughs> yeah, arachnophobia. The characters are more grounded; they're a little cartoonish, but they're a little more grounded. And Jeff okay. Daniels is so they're all good. spiders. Yeah, well, no, uh, the human characters. I mean, but like the uh, 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 Jeff Daniels is really, really, really great in it, and um. John Goodman's the only like super over the top character, but like, dude, you'd love arachnophobia. Oh, You've got to watch that. I'm going to watch it, Seth. And we have two minutes left. So to talk about arachnophobia. We, <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, until our focus group, uh, our listener enters the fray. Do we have one? Give, we, we do. It's going to be Grant Wakefield again <laughs> okay. for our practice. Um, because it's easy access for this practice episode. Um, I feel okay. I feel okay to go ahead. I feel and okay. Them. Do do we want? Do we want to? I guess a big thing. Do I, I think we should go ahead with the the park ranger as and and a hawk. Yeah, but who are we casting as that park ranger? That's true. Uh, Sebastian Stan <laughs> and Anthony Ma- Mackey is voicing the Falcon <laughs> or the Hawk. <laughs> Um, um, no, it needs to be. It needs to be like an old guy that uh, actually that makes sense, and a legit, um, a legit scary guy, like in a good, uh, um, someone who wouldn't be a, con- a con- like like Tommy Lee Jones, you know, like that kind of a. I like that. I wish you go with Tommy Lee Jones, just straight up. All right, we're going with Tommy Lee Jones, Two Face himself, Harvey Dent, and let's go Zendaya Bird and uh, Nick Offerman Velcro but I, I'm going to throw this out here I don't and I don't think we have time to rethink it entirely but there is a version where we swap the genders of those characters and actually play against type and have Bird I like be, that you know what I mean like have Velcro be <coughs> I st- I'd love Nick Offerman no, though no but no 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 I like that I was pr- trying to play against type with the uh his voice and a labradoodle. Uh, so I think having, yeah, I, I like the idea of, of, of a dude playing the bird and a, and a girl playing the bi- the big dog. So do we keep it like uh, a Zendaya and, uh, and Nick Offerman or do we? Sure. Nick Offerman and a cockatoo is pretty funny. It to is me. pretty funny. <laughs> uh, maybe it's, maybe we just do a, a uh, big poodle instead too. I don't know. I like the doodle. Maybe not. I like the I like, doodle. I like the doodle. I like the doodle. Okay. I have a golden doodle named Lorraine, so that's kind of why I'm... Lorraine. Yeah. Lorraine. That's so, you didn't know that? so yeah. freaking great. Lorraine bro. Baines McDog Worley. <laughs> I love it. I, I assume there's a Back to the Future uh, intent with Lorraine that Baines McDog. Well, I don't know how else I would get there. Besides Back to the Future. Okay. Sorry. I didn't I didn't hear the, the last, the middle and last It's thing. a McDog instead of McFly. Yeah. Lorraine Baines oh. McDog Worley. Um, does Arlie love Back to the Future as well? Everybody does. And Ava especially does too. Like Ava, I've got Ava into all my favorite movies. Ellie doesn't care so much about anything. It's not Marvel, but <laughs> Ava, Ava, I've gotten into everything, including arachnophobia. I'm going to let Grant in. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. What's up guys. <laughs> Hello welcome Grant and, the and welcome to the writer's room game show. Uh, oh, thank you. Today we've got a, a great a great film for you. Our assignment to hear. Our assignment was actually um, an indie comedy, okay. which um, for indie comedy, we just went ahead and said under 5 million, keep it, uh, you know, a, sure. good, a good low budget. Um, the tone was fun. 
Okay. The, the demographic was two to six year olds. No, no. Two to six year old girls. We actually two to six year old part. girls. Okay. Yes. Um, indie, indie comedy. That's two to six year old girls. Yes. Yes. And then the studio okay. mandate was to, uh, it again, needed to require a, uh, a jet ski chase. Um, <laughs> Studio and, loves jet skis. And we actually had a great meeting with the studio about 30 minutes ago. Um, and they uh, apparently the head of the studio, his son is really, really into dinosaurs. And they really needed us to incorporate dinosaurs somewhere in the story to help him look like a, a good dad. You know, he just really wants to do something for his son. So, okay. um, but anyways, we've got a great, uh, great story prepared that we want to pitch for. Uh, pitch to you and ask you a few questions afterwards. Yeah, the 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 movie we made is uh, Velcro and Bird. Um, it's a working it's a working title. I'm gonna have Seth start the pitch and uh, I'll jump back in. Okay. In a little bit. So, fun fact I want to share with you guys is that um, before we start, is that well, we were talking about indie comedy and like what what makes for indie comedy. And like like Polly said, we're focusing on something that's a budget of under 5 million, you know, preferably even lower than that. Um, and demo to two to six year olds. We're like, what indie movies have been made for kids? And the first one that I thought of was Benji, which I don't know if you guys are familiar. Ryan, we didn't even talk about this. Benji was filmed in Denton and it was. Uh, uh, that's right. I remember you telling me that because you were reading the, uh, which I read as well, the biography not, not really biography. It was more like a memoir of a uh, editor. Um, what's his name? Oh Hirsch. yeah. Uh, oh wow. Uh, Paul. Uh... Paul Hirsch, right? Yes. Yeah, Paul Hirsch. And he was writing about it because uh, he was he edited Phantom of the Paradise here as well and was talking about all of the movies that <laughs> so are shot here. Weird. Anyways, and Benji was a really big independent film and. Uh, it was, uh, it, and we're like, you know what? That's a genre that just hasn't been around in a while. This like the, the, the live action animal like genre, and it's particularly like we, we of course think of Homeward Bound, um, where you have the whole thing thing of a an animals that are voiced by, uh, by human characters, but not without any lip syncing attempted. It's almost like an internal mm-hmm. monologue that only the animals can hear. Which yeah. that's a that's a very low budget concept. Um, uh, and we did some research about animal like training and what animals can be trained and stuff. And we, we've come to a story that we really love that is inherently it's a, it's a, it's a buddy comedy about a dog and a bird. Um, uh, so to give you a little bit of setup, it's about this family, um, uh, mom and dad, uh, older brother, younger sister, the younger sister just turned six. And when the brother turned six, they got a dog. And so there became an agreement that when she turned six, she would be able to get a, um, uh, an, a, a pet of her choice, pre- presumably a dog. And so there's this big whole setup about... He named the dog uh, Velcro. Yeah, the it's dog a lab- Velcro. It's a Labradoodle. Okay. Labradoodle. Okay. Um, and so it comes to be the girl's six-year-old birthday... We, we are fully expecting her to come home with a dog and she comes home with a uh, sun parakeet. This like the most like vibrant looking, exotic looking bird like ever uh, voiced by Nick Offerman. Um, okay. Uh, Zendaya the way, voices the lab root. Yeah. Uh, Velcro. <laughs> yeah. Zendaya. And so, uh, and she names this bird bird, just bird, which we should point out that like the brother and sister are at this age gap that happens where no matter what the younger sister does, it it will annoy the hell out of the older brother. There's nothing anybody can do about it. Nothing she can do about it. She's not intentionally annoying him. She's just an annoying person to him. So the fact that she picked out a bird, the fact that she named the bird bird is obnoxious. And this bird annoys the crap out of this dog. Like Velcro can't stand bird because bird uh, is loud, uh, requires tons of attention uh, 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 plays pranks on him and bugs him and follows him around everywhere or follows her around everywhere, swoops down, every, like a constant like annoyance, which is a good parallel. Obviously it parallels the relationship between the brother and the sister. Um, so we get a little bit of that dynamic and then the family decides to take a, uh, like a weekend trip to like an Airbnb just to get out of the house 
the kids insist, can we bring the animals? The brother is like, of course, can we not bring the bird? Of course, we can't bring a bird. The mom, so we get like a scene where the dog is listen, is like overhearing and listening uh, in the other room, hearing the, the, the mom insisting to the dad find an Airbnb that, can, that allows dogs and birds. And it's like, that's the most specific thing ever. Like, I'm not gonna be able to find uh, uh, an Airbnb for a dog. And then, of course, finds one that allows for a dog and a bird. So then, of course, now, and much to the annoyance of the brother, this, uh, the bird gets to come on vacation, on this weekend vacation, get away with them. And this is where the story gets very interesting. I'll jump in here, Seth. Yeah, go for um, it. So they get in the car, they shove, you know, all their, their bags in a car, the whole family, the dog and the bird in a car to go on a road trip to go to this Airbnb. Um, of course, that's creating problems, just having a bird in the car flying around. Um, and, uh, you know, we get a lot of um, family, you know, it's sort of arguing between the brother and sister about the animals, you know, obviously they're um, annoyed of each other. Um, and just like they're annoyed, the dog and the bird are annoyed at each other. And um, Velcro, the dog, uh, voiced by Zendaya, just to sort of play a little prank on the bird um, starts to roll down the window. Um, a draft of wind takes the bird and the bird flies out the window. And of course, you know, Velcro was just trying to play a little joke. You know, she doesn't want the, the bird to die. And so the family pulls over Velcro jumps out and chases bird who um, is in a situation. Maybe there's a hawk chasing you know, the bird and, you know, Velcro just wants to save bird's life. They run away, family chases, but they aren't able to catch um, Velcro and bird. And now they're lost. The family is sad, uh, which sets out our adventure of um, our family trying to find Velcro and bird and Velcro and bird trying to find their way back to the family. And of course, you know, getting into lots of trouble. So Mm -hmm. here, here in our, our second act, um, the, uh, Velcro and bird are off on a journey. Um, and, uh, there's actually our antagonist, which is actually a, a forest ranger, park ranger and a hawk, um, or a Falcon, you know, who, who we will, we'll just nickname Falcon and the winter soldier for now. Um, <laughs> played, played, Can played I ask by, who plays them? Played by Tommy Lee Jones. Is the park ranger. And uh, okay. the Falcon is voiced by Anthony Mackie. Um, <laughs> um, Incredible. And, and uh, anyways, uh, Velcro and Bird um, get into lots of hijinks here in the second act. We we have um, uh, their, their story is basically them um, learning to like each other and work together and become a team. And uh, ultimately just uh, learn to live together and, and be friends and work uh, together. And, you know, there's a whole thing yeah. like the bird, like uh, oh, there was an yes. argument between the brother and sister early on where the brother is like, um, the sister's like, why do you keep acting like this bird is lame? This bird used to be a dinosaur. And the, and the son is like, the brother's like, no, the bird was never a dinosaur. This bird was not a dinosaur. That's how evolution works. Like the bird's ancestors were dinosaurs. And then the, the sister's like, well, yeah, this bird knows dinosaur stuff. Like it way more than the dog does. And so throughout, while they're in the woods, the bird keeps trying to argue like i know dinosaur stuff like i don't know like i'm fine i'm totally fine out here i don't need your help i'm i come i'm from a dinosaurs. dinosaur yeah I'm and it's nick offerman saying all this of and course so the idea is we work up to this place where uh the act like the where velcro actually has to like motivate bird by like reminding bird like you're a dinosaur like be a dinosaur and letting the bird actually do something dinosaur like to like rescue the two of them or get the two of them out of out of trouble in some way by by summoning uh their inner dinosaur um their pterodactyl uh and we also (laughs) had this whole bit about um so Velcro can actually loosely read a clock based on just Velcro knows what time breakfast and dinner happens. Classic um, dog. They're always, they know exactly what time it is to eat, mm-hmm. exactly what time it is to sleep. 
And, and, and Velcro knows that the Airbnb is booked for three days and uh, on the third day, dinner time is their checkout. So they are trying to get to this Airbnb by that specific time. So they're able to follow by clocks based on when dinner time is loosely. And it gets to a point to where the fastest way to get to this Airbnb is by uh, jet ski down across this lake or by river or whatever. And so they go and they seek the help of these two. We're, we're just internally calling them uh, 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 skinny, Badger and Badger skinny, and skinny Pete. Pete, but they're not going to be actual like stoners, but these two guys, you know, just think like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. They're not a stoner, but, and the idea is right. that they run up and they're like, like uh, uh, and Velcro's like barks at, at them, like for to try to get their attention. And of course, we can assume, hear what what she's saying. They immediately from her assume perspective. that there's yeah. like someone's trapped in a well or someone's in trouble. And like like so, they go into this whole argument about like just because a dog barks at you doesn't mean that someone's in trouble. Not every dog is Lassie, but this dog clearly wants something. We should follow it. So they end up like they end up following the dog, and the dog convinces them to like they can like convince these two stoner dudes to like take them on jet skis across the lake somewhere <laughs> and, and they, right, this right whole running gag yeah. that like they don't that like they never are full are properly interpreting what the animals are trying to tell them um except one time they get it weirdly 100 percent accurate but then at the end they're like you know bye hope you find your dad or something that's like not at all <laughs> like goal is but like we did it we saved these animals um okay and, yeah and then uh, and then simultaneously with you know with Velcro and Bird uh, doing this, we also have the brother and sister who are, you know, obviously sad trying to find their animals. They've right. got some fighting that and and some figuring out to do. Obviously, the brother lost his dog that he's had for three years, but the sister also grew up with Velcro. She loves Velcro as well. She's like, but she's also sad about Bird. And so you know, of whole, course, his whole argument is like, "What are you sad about? You didn't know this bird for like." Uh, two weeks and she's like I also knew Velcro I lost two animals so I actually am hurting more and <laughs> and it gets them to this point of like common ground of realization like and and empathy for each other um, and ultimately the goal is to get them to this place where they're having to work together the brother and sister are having to work together to get to the animals and the animals are having to work together to get to them in some way we don't have the mechanics of it fully worked out but that's our goal is to thematically mm -hmm. and emotionally land in that place with falcon yep. and the winter soldier you know involved in some way as well yeah yeah so the the last the last after they make it across that lake with uh, with with badger and skinny pete they just have one last final uh you know run in with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, in which Velcro and Bird have to learn or have to use the ways they've learned to work together to overcome Falcon and the Winter Soldier and make it to their family and a beautiful to be a dinosaur and to be a wolf. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes, yeah. They have to yeah embrace their their um, origins yes. as a species to yeah, right, uh, to overcome. Right. And uh, of course, there's a happy ending. We got to make these two to six year old girls happy and you know <laughs> want to rewatch the movie over and over which is ultimately the our big goal we want to give the studio a movie that uh it's going to be successful but uh that is um uh falcon or sorry <laughs> <laughs> velcro and bird aka bird's eye view uh, um bird's eye. Okay. so um so um two questions that we've got to ask you um Grant, aka Focus Group, and would you go see this film, and would you recommend it to a friend? Um, we should have called a two to six year old girl. I was really, going to say, well, here's the thing: I have a four and a half year old girl. Um, I think she would watch it, even though right now she's in a phase where she just wants she just wants to watch shows. Uh, she doesn't want to watch movies for whatever reason. Uh, she just wants shows. Um, <laughs> that's the painful truth right there. But um, our futures. I think I think she uh, would be interested in this because she likes animals. Um, would I recommend it to a friend? Yeah, I think so. I mean, this is a sweet family yes! film. Uh, yes. Yeah. We did it. <laughs> We're successful writers. I just want to thank um, the studio for providing uh, such a beautiful assignment. Um, we Incredible. killed this one. We killed this one, Seth. Uh, I, I, I'd say we, we, 
We did it with some more duct tape than the last time around. But we definitely <laughs> That's true. Got That's there. true. I think we owe Falcon on the Winter Soldier a whole lot of heavy yes. lifting. Uh, yes, for all that heavy lifting. <laughs> and Toy Story. And Toy Story. We almost did a Sebastian Stan, had Sebastian Stan as the Ranger. Ranger. <laughs> yes. With a, with a metal arm. With a metal arm. Or it was a wolf with a metal arm at one point. Yeah, that's what it was. Yes. That was the Winter Soldier. Oh, that's great. Um, that's great. Well, yeah. Great job. Great job. Thank you. It's a, sol- a solid uh, plot in uh, story structure. So, yeah, flows well. Uh, it's fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us on uh, this episode of the Writer's Room Game Show. It seemed to be a success. Oh, we did it. The we end. did it. <laughs> success. The Writer's Room Game Show with me, Ryan Pauly, and Seth Worley. Executive produced by Grant Wakefield at Weekend Video and Ann Fogarty at Plot Devices. Our art is by your buddy, Meg Lewis, and our face-melting music is by Ben Worley. The Writer's Room Game Show is a weekend video production in association with Plot Devices. Learn more about weekend video at weekend.video and check out writersroomgame.show to listen to all of our episodes and suggest your own prompts for future shows. And don't forget to rate and review our show on Apple Podcasts. It really helps our show out a lot. See you in the next one.